Hello and welcome back. Till today, we have processed our Spark streaming data and written it to only one sec. Today, we will see how to write data to multiple sec. The use case will still remain same. We will read JSON data from Kafka using Spark streaming. We will flatten and explore data and we will write the same data to multiple sec. In this case, it will be Parquet and PostgreSQL database. We will also understand what is the problem when we try to use multiple write stream command in order to write to multiple sync and the possible solution to it. Now, if you have not seen our previous video, I would recommend you to go back and watch our previous video first. The code implementation for flattening and exploding the data is present in our previous session videos. So, let's first understand what is the problem when we try to use multiple write stream commands. Now, consider a scenario where we are reading a data using read stream into a data frame df. And to write the data in multiple things, we are using two write stream command for the same DF. Now, each write stream has to maintain its own checkpoint location in order to capture the metadata. Now, since there are two checkpoint location being maintained, it is not mandatory that both the checkpoint location will process the same offset at the same time. The reason being, some of the write stream command has less latency than the other one. And thus, one can be processing faster and another can be processing slower. Again, each time a write stream command is being called for a micro batch, the data frame computes the whole DAG and processes the whole data till read stream. Now, since we have two write stream command in order to write the same data, the same data will be processed twice in two jobs each time. And thus, we are reading the same data twice in order to write it down to two different streams. So, what is the best effective way to handle this scenario? Handle this, Spark provides us with a function call for each batch. This function will take an input of a python function and in this python function we can provide any number of write stream that we are going to write so we can write df dot right here and again df dot right here the benefit is this python will be executed for each micro batch and it will take inputs as the data frame of that micro batch and a batch id this batch ID will denote the micro batch which we are processing and df will hold the data of that particular micro batch. So, for the same micro batch, we can now write the data to any number of sync. Again, the checkpoint will be maintained at the for each batch location. Now, for all the batch that we processed, we'll have only one checkpoint and we will write the same data to all the syncs possible. And this is one of the effective way how we can handle multiple sync. In today's example, we are going to write the same data to a Parquet format and the same data to a PostgreSQL DB. Let's go ahead and check out that code implementation. I am in my JupyterLab environment. This is the same code that we have used for our use case to read the JSON data from Kafka streaming source, process it using Spark streaming, flatten and explode the data and write it back to the sync. Till today, we were writing the data in either a file format or console. We will use the same code, but today we will write to multiple sync. For today's session, I have made a smaller change to the Spark session. I have added one more extra config called Spark jar in which I have added the PostgreSQL jar, which I have already downloaded to a location called Jovian EB2 jars. Now, Spark jars can also be used to import multiple jars that you want for your Spark session. And today we will use this jar file in order to write our data to PostgreSQL. Let me run this Spark cell to generate our Spark session. Awesome, my Spark session is generated. Let me go ahead and restart my Spark UI. So I'll go to localhost 4040. Great, my Spark UI is also up and running. So, for today's session, we are again going to read the data from Kafka. We are again subscribing the data from device data topic and we will start our offset from earliest. Now, in order to demonstrate how we are writing the data to multiple sync, today I will produce the data manually into the Kafka. So, let me go ahead and open the command prompt and connect to the device data topic in order to publish some data. I have opened my command prompt and I am connected to the Docker container for our Kafka. Let me use the Kafka console producer command. So, I will write Kafka console producer and our topic is device data and we are using the bootstrap server which is localhost 29092 as soon as i hit enter we are inside the terminal ready to publish data now since the code implementation is same as our previous session i'm not going to explain the code again to you you can go ahead and check out our previous video in order to understand how we are reading the data from Kafka and flattening the data and exploding it. So, I will quickly rerun the complete cell till the write stream command. Great, the code execution in flattening is complete. Now, in our previous session, we were using the format as console in order to show the data in console. Today, we are going to write the data using for each batch. 
and for each batch we'll take a python function as an input now let's write our python function first so to do that i'll write def and the name of our function would be device data output and we know that it will take a data frame as input and batch id so i'll just put pass for now let me implement the for each batch command first so in place of format i'll replace it to for each batch and the input for this would be our python function which is device data output now for this write stream command our processing time is set to 10 seconds so in every 10 seconds it will trigger for that micro batch and this for each batch command will send the data frame to our python function device data output whatever code implementation will be done for this python function will trigger every 10 seconds for that micro batch and the data frame would contain the data for that 10 second micro batch and the batch id will display id for that micro batch so let's first write a print statement in order to see the batch id so for that i'll write print batch id plus i'll convert it to string so i'll write str batch id great it will print our batch id every time it processes the micro batch now we will do two processing first we will write the data to parquet format and second we will write the data to jdbc which is our postgres so writing the data to parquet format is pretty straightforward we can write df dot write dot format and our format would be parquet and we will put the mode as append because every time we want to append the data so i'll write append and we will save the data data slash output slash device data parquet wait implementation for parquet is complete let's go ahead and write our implementation for jdbc so in order to write the data in jdbc we will need multiple options so i'll write those options one by one first we have to use data frame dot write dot format which is jdbc now jdbc would take the first option as driver so i'll write option and i'll put driver org dot postgres dot driver now the next option would be the url which would be our jdbc url so i'll write url and I'll put the JDBC URL, which will be in format of jdbc.postgresql and the host name of our Postgres database with the port 5432 and the name of the database. The next option would be the name of the table. So I've already created a table called device data. So I'll put TV table as device data. So I can show you here is my table. You can see the table here. We have all the columns that we have flattened out. And if I run a select star from the Postgres database, you can see there is no data in this table for now. Now, the next option would be the username. So I'll write username. And the username for our database is same SQL pad. And again, the option is for password, which is again SQL pad. Now, this database for me is already set up. In case you don't have a PostgreSQL database, you need to first set up your database and gather the information for the database name, the table name, the username, the password, and the host name. Rest all would remain same. And in the end, we will write dot save. Great. This concludes our writing data to JDBC and to Parquet format. Now, let's write a so command just to display the data so that we know the data is being processed so what i'll do is i'll just add one more command here in order to display the data so i'll write df.show so every time a micro batch is processed it would be written in form of parquet it will be posted to the jdbc and this will be displayed again we will also see the batch id for that micro batch now i've just forgot one more thing since this table is already created and in order to append the data we need to put the mode as append there is a small correction the option for username would not be username it would be user so this would be our jdbc you need user not username so let me run this great okay let's go ahead and trigger our write stream command and we just need to change the capital e to small e for power each batch similarly this would be for each batch let me run this great we can see the batch zero here as there was no data being posted to Kafka, we can see the batch zero being empty and we can see the so command triggered and there is no data being printed in the output data frame. 
let me go ahead and put some data in the Kafka. For that, I already have some JSON data in my notepad. So I'll just copy this and I'll go ahead and paste this and hit enter. Great. Now you see the batch ID 1 being printed here and the data for that particular batch. Let me go ahead and run a select query to see if the data is posted to JDBC. So I'll come back here and run the select command again. Nice. Now we can see the data being posted in the JDBC as well. All the columns are populated properly. Let me go back and see the output directory. So I'll go to data, output, device data dot parquet and you can see the data being posted in the device data parquet output folder as well. So we are able to write the data in parquet format as well as to the JDBC source which is PostgreSQL in our case. Great. Now if you understand it properly, for each micro batch, we are triggering our Python code only once. And the same data frame which is being passed to this Python function is being written to multiple sources. So the job is reading the data from the source only once. And we are maintaining only one checkpoint location in order to write the same data to multiple sync. And this effectively solves our problem to write the data to multiple syncs. I hope you understood a lot of concepts about multiple sync today. If you like my content, make sure to like and subscribe the channel. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.